Hello and welcome to 3G's episode 391. I'm your Joe Dix, joined by Mark Augustiniak. What's up? Matt Selner. Hello. The Free Cheese is a weekly video game podcast about video games brought to you once a week by thefreecheese.com. Not only am I having deja vu, but you are hearing... Nope, you're hearing this for the first time. That's right. Haven't recorded at all this week. And we're excited to be here to talk to you about Artifact going free to play, Guilty Gear Strive hitting a hot delay, and Yacht Club Games bringing their signature franchise to our base. We nice. lost a bunch of recording stuff, listener. Oh, I was just going to uh, say, we're cosplaying Loop Hero, you know? Well, what happened <laughs> is Matt talked favorably about GameStop, uh, or maybe mockingly about GameStop. Also, you just froze for like half a second there, and now I'm having panic attacks again. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I guess my computer thing. didn't like that, so it yeah, shit the bed, no, so uh, here we are. We're here, episode 391. Now, Thanks. we've already been uh, acclimated this week, but the listeners have not, so... To kick them off, Matt, how are you doing this week? Uh, good. What are you feeling <laughs> on, on Coconut? Oh, it's uh, the uh, the Zombie Land. Th- that line from Tallahassee. We're in, Perfect, yeah, this is totally organic. The fucking this truck. Still works the exactly. truck in the ditch. When he oh opens it, he's pissed about the snowball. It's not the taste of the consistency, you know? Yeah, that's, that is the one, of course. Uh, Mark, if... If you were a snowball flavor, what would you be? Black tar heroin. There it is. That's the one. Um, all right, final. This is final call for any fun stories outside of video games. This is the world's worst intro. I guess it could have been. This could be worse. I used to record the show drunk, right? So like, there could have <laughs> been that. Not really. I think we only had one episode like that, and then never did it again because it felt so embarrassed. <laughs> True listeners can find out the... (laughs) Try to guess which episode it is. (laughs) I don't know. All of them between 2012 and 15? (laughs) What? Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of fun times. Uh, We're going to have fun times this week. We're going to talk all about some stuff, all about some video games, including Resident Evil 6. Mark, you've been playing some Resident Evil 6. Uh, which we've come to know as the uh, Black Swan of the Resident Evil 6 family. Yeah. I immediately thought well, about the movie, them. and I was about to like really disagree with you, but never mind. I see what you, see what you did. The odd duck, if you will. Uh, yeah, Resident Evil 6, kind of... Uh, Kind of the black mark on, the, on the, the franchise, but you're still enjoying it all the less, right? Yes, but because I have detached myself from any real investment, you know, like you just you just unplug, play with a friend, don't treat it like a Resident Evil game, just treat it like your typical over-the-shoulder shooter from 2013, with all those bells and whistles of 2013. Do and... you feel like it's kind of like watching the Resident Evil movies to an extent, where like you know they're... No, I don't mean it like that, because you also are the madman who watched, like, all 21 I, of those. I, I, did, I did watch those. I don't know. 21 <laughs> of those? No. It's like, uh... It's ugh. like 19. Oh, you're talking... Oh, the, the Jovovich ones. Never mind. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah, yeah, the animated yeah. ones. Uh, I think I have two more to watch of those. Okay. So, but But, like, watching those, it is obviously not the same as the games, but, like... You can approach it as such and maybe find enjoyment in a different way. And is that kind of how you're looking at Resident Evil 6? Or is it even further from that? Or Like, I uh, I don't know. Like, the it's hard. It was hard for me to kind of, like, turn off my brain to watch the movies. Because at least with 6, you can tell that there's still some care put into it. Regardless of how cheesy and, like not that true to its roots it is you can you can still sense that like there are worse games in the series than this one i can say that with confidence i am not gonna play operation raccoon city and fucking uh resistance or uh, (laughs) yeah hey you want to play resistance sometime soon i'm I'm kind of i don't know i don't know (laughs) not the one i mean like like there's it has a good idea it's just not 
as well executed, I think. Where, like, Resident Evil 6, it has a lot of those tropes that other action games have, and, you know, this wasn't a time where horror was kind of dying as a whole and whatever, so everything's just kind of poopy in that regard, but... Yeah. It's, I think it's playable today, I th- as long as you have a friend that you can have fun with and just get into it, you know, not worry about, you know, not just, I don't know, I th- there's still a level of polish here that I can appreciate, despite it being what it is. Yeah, I mean, it was still, like, it is to date, I think, well, maybe not, I don't know about 7, but I feel like 6 was the one that Capcom put the most resources into, at least with number of persons working on a single game at the time. Um, so yeah. it still certainly is that I, the playing co-op to make it more, uh, enjoyable that, that approach have, has there been another game? I feel like in the last year, especially me and one of you or both of you played through something co-op that was that much, but five halo five, maybe, or four, no four, we played a long time ago, but, um, is there another example of that that you can think of? That's like, we're like, it's fine, but like, it's only better with co-op. Yeah, like, it's just, like, it's that much more acceptable or... Sea of Thieves. Hey, there you go. I mean, th- that is entirely the, a yeah, game that's... They make it mandatory. <laughs> it's just just to sail a ship, you need at least one other person to not yeah. go insane. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I mean... I, I guess, like, most... I feel like most shooters are kind of like that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, Borderlands, I know, like, it, you know, it's whatever, but, like, at the time, like, when I was really enjoying it, like, I, like the story was kind of, like, whatever. It, it yeah. wasn't awful, but playing with a friend, I'm not thinking about it that much. I'm just thinking about just, you know, using our skills together and just making that work. And, you know, that could be all, that could be fun when you wanted yeah, to Yeah, I remember playing that first Borderlands with, uh, I didn't have friends, but with podcasts on and just listening to podcasts yeah. and having that and just playing through that. It, that made it that much better. Cause, and it, it wasn't like I was actively turned off by the story or the humor or anything like I am now with it, but I was like, there was nothing gripping or whatever. It was like, I just want to see the numbers go up, get different colored things, change, you know, my character around. But um, No, I don't know. If any, now I don't know if like if Mario Party, on the other hand, I don't know if that is more fun with friends or equally as bad as playing with computers. Hmm. Just don't play that hmm. game. That's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still shocked that they have not released. <laughs> I'm not. More... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, with Resident Evil Six, like yeah, like my, uh, my friend and I are, are playing it because she streams it every Monday and Friday and. We like we got through Leon's campaign, which was probably the most vibe feeling of Resident Evil. Uh, at least more, it, it leaned a little more towards, I guess, the older ones, and like obviously a bit of four, just because Leon. Uh, five definitely is, I think, hits it better than than Chris's campaign, but you can still see elements from that as well. Yeah. But the but they have cool like bug morphing enemies. It kind of it kind of makes you think of John Carpenter's The Thing a little bit. Hmm. So I was like, I, th- I think I think it's good design. I think it's cool how they morph and everything's like some like some bodies just split in half and turn into bugs. Other ones are they get molded into a cocoon and then something new bursts out of that thing. Like it's a lot, it's, it's, it's a lot of cool sights to see uh, design wise. Um, I haven't done the other. Uh, chapters yet i mean campaigns yet but leon's is complete that took two days and now i'm on chris is in the middle of that but probably in two more weeks i should have that finished but yeah i mean if if you're willing not to take that game you know put it if you can lower your expectations with it <laughs> and not try to treat it like like four or any of the older ones uh you know play with a friend think you might have a, a decent time with it so you're going to go in order, right? So you're going to go, well, I guess not timeline, but like you're going to go with Jake first, then Ada, I'm assuming, right? Uh, Yeah. Is is Ada co-op? Oh, uh, well, maybe maybe not. I think we, we talked about this last week. I don't remember if she is or not. It, it, it's giving me the impression that it's not. Okay, it might not be. I just know Ada was the just one. Just because of was, the, the yeah. story that's going on. I just remember Ada was the one you had to beat one campaign to unlock hers. 
Hmm. They, she was I, not they, there from the start until a patch. I was about to say was, it's there from the start now. Is I maybe this is is Ada still around? Yes. Okay. I didn't know if like this campaign kills her in the end or something, but I know she wasn't in seven. But we saw. Well, I don't know about seven because I didn't do all the DLC for seven yet. So I mean, I don't know if she. Hmm? I mean, I can I can tell you if you want. Do you expect? Let me put it this. Do you expect Ada to appear in Resident Evil Village? I f- no. I feel like I only expect her to show up when Leon shows up. I was going to say that's a Leon character. Yeah, like 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 Leon is like. Do you not for expect her. Leon to show up in Resident Evil Village? I don't expect him to, but if he did, holy shit! Because we haven't seen Leon in 2020, 2021. We don't know what he looks like. Because last we like, saw him chronologically is, is six. That's 2013. Yeah, we don't have a video game chronicle story this week, but you know, one thing that they are oft to talk about is that RE4 remake and uh, yeah, I feel um I feel like with Village going to Europe, it might be a good time to like reintroduce the world to Leon if they plan to you know, propel sales toward our, I mean, I think 4 remakes going to sell great as long as it's a great game or even if it's not, I think it'll probably sell great knowing what it is and where it's coming from, but you know, I think having why why be so quick to remake 4 when 4 is so readily available if you're not planning a bigger story for Leon in 8 or something? I don't know. Maybe I'm creeding into it. But. Yeah, I mean, it could lead into something, or maybe they're maybe they're thinking beyond Village. Yeah, it could be. I'm sure there's, um, a, there's a storyboard out there somewhere that goes beyond Village. it is odd that Leon has only been in the even number games, and it's... To not be in eight, I'm sorry, it's just called Village according to Capcom. But right, right, right. It's the eighth one. It's just weird to not have a minute. Yeah. So we'll we'll see. Also, I don't know about the the story stuff. Remember, eight was supposed to be Revelations three, and they pivoted it and put it into the main lore. So remember, they can just do anything with this franchise at this point. True. True. Yeah, Devil May Cry was supposed to be Resident Evil four. Correct. Right. 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 <laughs> I yes. Um and Dead by Daylight is supposed to be a character action game, no, or survival game where you play as famous monsters. But now we're getting a new survivor and a new killer. Uh K pop superstars, Eugene Lee and uh the Trickster are joining as Survivor and uh Killer respectively. If you were going to cast a musical figure into Dead by Daylight, who would you guys want to see added to the game? Um, Exhibit. <laughs> nice answer. Do not listen to his most recent album, but nice answer. Man. Uh, I just assume Exhibit will be the killer and he will run around with a wrench as he destroyed your cars. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> Rob Zombie. Oh, that's oh, a good man. one. These are top notch answers. I don't have a. That's actually a really good answer. I just did the first joke doc. I think. But <laughs> realistically, honestly, I could see the mascot from Disturbed being one. Mm. Oh my god, ICP. ICP. <laughs> Co op killers. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know what, dude? Put all of the drummers from Slipknot in. How many did they have? 52, I think. Jesus. I did not know that. You, no, there's just three. I was like, you, you said that number pretty quickly. <laughs> I almost <laughs> believed you. I was like, how it many? Is, honestly, it is, it is three unless something has changed. But yeah, they have three drummers. Damn. I say put all of Slipknot in there. I'd be very happy with that. So I, this, uh, the K-pop addition to Dead by Daylight, are they also adding K-pop music? Like, is that going to kind of just swell in the background of the forest as you wander through? Or hmm. is it still meant to be I guess it d- I guess it depends if it ha- if the killer has its own level, like its own stage. There might be some like themes going on, like ambience wise or something. I don't know. Yeah, uh, isn't well, there out as of? So- uh, I was say, isn't there a noise that plays when the killer's around? Uh, like a there is a little jingle. I think it depends on the character, but I know in general you will hear a heartbeat if if they see you, if they're like nearby or something like that. Uh, players on PC can try both the new Survivor and Killer as of March 2nd. 
And as of... Is there no date on this? Just this summer. Okay, sorry. I thought they put a hard date on this. I might be thinking of a different news story. But as of this summer, players on all platforms, save Switch, will be able to try out a brand new cooperative third-person survival shooter, Aliens Fireteam. Guess what? Third, three-person, three-player teams. We got three people here on this team. Uh, from Cold Iron Studios. Uh, the recently purchased Cold Iron Studios. Developing Aliens Fireteam. Cooperative third-person survival shooter. This is the worst way I've ever read a news story in the history of news stories. Let's start from, start this from the top. Delete the whole recording. Let's start over again. No. Uh, listeners, here you go. Aliens Fireteam. A cooperative third-person survival shooter where three-player teams fight swarms of interstellar creatures to complete the mission and get out alive. Uh, this is scheduled for worldwide worldwide release this summer for Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PlayStation Five and Four, and Steam. No details on pricing. This game is set 23 years after the original Alien film trilogy. You take on the role of a colonial marine aboard the USS Endeavor, recently tasked with an answering a distress call from the outer colonies. Uh, you will be able to customize your Weapons and mods, there's character progression, different advancement systems that you can kind of like level up your character change. I assume what they mean is kind of like a skill tree, although they're also adding something called a challenge card system where you can kind of mutate each mission, as they say, um, to kind of change your experience with each mission each time around. This sounds really cool and looks really cool. That's the same mechanic Back for Blood's going to have. Yeah, I, I like this whole bunch. Yeah, I, I think the uh, same sounds cool. Yeah. There, that Alien Isolation game came out, and I never finished it. Maybe I should... Maybe I'm going to play that. I'm going to play it start it today. There you go. It's It's been decided. I have it on Epic. I haven't played it. I have it on everything, man. Like, I have... I got that game for Christmas for PS4 a long time ago, and was super stoked about it, and never finished it. And then it hit Game Pass. I think I have it from, like, a Humble Bundle back in the day. I have it all over the place. I never finished it. Um, <laughs> and I've been thinking a whole bunch about Aliens recently because uh, Aliens vs. Predator just dropped on the Mr. Well, at least in a beta core. But I'm... Nice. I got Aliens on the brain. And then this got announced and... Uh, it's such a good game. The arcade one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I fired it up for like four seconds just to make sure it was running okay, and it is, and yeah, it's... I haven't, I've never played it, so I'm excited to. Um, but yeah, this game seems cool. Like, I, I'm I'm into the idea of this. I, I, I... I'm trying to think of the last thing like this that I've even gotten into, but... Uh, I'm, I'm very intrigued. It has, like... Just- it's given me like uh, obviously like you know because I already made the comparison to Back for Blood, but like both of those give me similar Left for Dead vibes, and I in- pretty much enjoy any game that has that type of play style, just co op in against the whole army. Yeah. Um, was it uh Vermintide? The Vermintide games are just like that too. Yeah, but I like the th- I like the third person man. I like I like me a third person action game. All uh, right, you did say that. Yeah. Cool. That's gonna no, but that's a plus in my column for this. Like, it still has. I think it's doing the. Not that I dislike Left for Dead or yeah. you know any of those, but like, I it's always an extra plus when no, it, I, I mean, third person. it definitely helps with camera stuff. Um, I, I'm just thinking how what would my I'm trying to pick in my head like how how would I play this? How would I want to play it? Because either mouse keyboard or controller, and I don't know what I want to do yet. Did they say cross play? I know it's coming out for everything, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's not there. Yeah, I, yeah, not sure. Not sure. We did also hear this week, speaking of horror games in first person, that Doom Three VR Edition will release on March twenty ninth. Uh, working both on PlayStation Four and PlayStation Five. I did not see anything about this. Um coming to other platforms just yet um but yeah Mm -hmm. there's not a ton uh about like how this is changing uh for vr specifically but 
they did talk about how like you'll be able to look at your wrist to check your current stats and you'll have better uh like they've they've done some things to make it work better motion control wise for VR but I don't assume it's going to be like kind of the teleporting you know what I mean like the the Doom VFR they put out uh, yeah I don't think it's that you do have motion controls you have a 180 degree turn option added in here does this game interest either of you in virtual reality uh, if it wasn't motion controls, I think I would have been a little more curious. Like, if it, if it feels more like Resident Evil 7 VR, where you are still using a DualShock, but you just get to look around for, like, aiming and whatnot, I think that would be a little more approachable for me. I don't know, like, whenever it comes to PC, I'm sure it will, it's a matter of time. I'll try it out then. I'm sure they'll have more control schemes by then. <laughs> Well, actually, no. I, shit, I forgot I had fucking Steam controllers. Their things are... They're, they're a godsend. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Uh, speaking of Steam, Mark, you've been playing... Uh, speaking of Steam and Steam, speaking of horror, you've been playing a game called Pacify, in addition to Resident Evil 6, that looks like uh, it's scratching that, that good survival horror itch in a way. Uh, tell us about Pacify. So, uh... <laughs> My theme this week is games I've played with my friend who was streaming them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, she has a, she plays, quote, uh, survival games on Sundays, so it's called Survival Sunday. And I was like, yeah, well, this is a survival game. It, it qualifies. Um, but th- this is kind of more like, uh, gameplay style is similar to, like, something like Slender. If you ever play that at all or know the concept of that where, you know, you have to find item and the more you find item, the game gets more difficult until you win. So, uh, for those that don't know, uh, Pacify, you are, you're like a paranormal team going into this house and you have to find these marked dolls and you have to burn them. Hmm. To free their spirits or something like that. And Nothing bad happens when you burn them, I'm sure. No, no. There, there, there's no ghost girl just hanging around the house the entire time. And, uh, you know, you have to find keys to all the doors, and she's floating around. But she has, like, she has a good side and a bad side. And her good side, she's just kind of walking around bow-legged, like, he, like, like she just crapped herself. And she'll just, like, kind of just, like, waddle around everywhere. And then she gets into her rage mode where she starts floating and flying everywhere. And the more dolls you burn, the faster and angrier she gets. Hmm. Where she's like supersonic, basically. And she's like zipping through this house at light speed. And if she runs into you, she will turn you tiny, like doll size. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you have to go back to the furnace. Like somebody has to, like you have to get wood and matches every time too that you use this up. But you have to have the furnace burning. You have to jump into the furnace to be back to normal. So you really need to rely on your friends to like to do that. Um, there are unmarked dolls in this mansion as well, and you have to give those to her. To it's it's kind of like your shield. Like if she runs into you, she'll take the doll automatically, and like it usually calms her down for a bit, and that's your time to run. But obviously, the further into the game you go, that time span that you have is it dwindles very very yeah. quickly. And she has, like, this this menacing scream slash roar that is you hear all throughout the house. And, you know, she can open – she opens any door that she flies by or goes through. So, like, you're just – like, if you're playing with friends and you're just, like, frantic because it's very claustrophobic. Like, the, like the, the field of view and the hallways are so, like, narrow and uh, your character models don't clip through each other. You bump into each other so you can get stuck if you're, like, trying to frantically run around. Oh, I'm not trying, just you are. Yeah, you're, yeah. Um, but like, it's, like, it's creepy and, and, and fun. Uh, very short-lived, though. Not much replay value unless you're playing with, like, a lot of other people. Um, I've seen a lot of people fail this game online, and I can understand why, you know? Like, the AI is just ridiculous with how fast she is and just how she can get you. And, you know, once she gets all of you, then you're all dolls, and it's game over. And you have to start over. And that's not fun, but like we did pretty good. Like this is all of our first times playing. I think we only failed once, and then we got it. Like and and on the first time, we only had like one doll left, or maybe two, 
to burn. And then by the second playthrough, we we did it. Uh, I was like, that's pretty good. Uh, Is it so. Scratch similar itch to Phasmophobia, or is it more like the Luigi's Mansion game on Nintendo Land? <laughs> so, well, I, I guess it feels more like Luigi's than somebody could... Oh, uh, no, somebody can beat the ghost girl. I forgot that there's a versus option. We didn't do that. She was AI the whole time. Uh, this is, like, the opposite of Phasmo. <laughs> like, gameplay yeah. style and whatever. Um, which is, which is, it's, like, funny, but also a little unfortunate for my friend because she, she, she did get scared on stream, yeah. and you, you can see her, like, throwing her headphones off, like, in a heartbeat. <laughs> she's not used to playing a lot of horror games, but she's, she's getting better. Did she capture oh. the clip for that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, but like it was funny because we were playing Phasma right right before it, so like it just like the pacing of Phasma was just slow. It's like it's slow and methodical, you know, because you're trying to figure things out and get clues, and you're taking your time going back and forth to the truck. This is all you're just in the house and you're fucked, and things are only getting faster. Yeah, <laughs> and you you can't escape. There's there's there, there's no safe haven. You you can't. It's just you can't hide. Door, shutting doors won't do anything. Yeah. Uh, so it, it is more frantic and, and fun in that in that sense. And they just added a uh, uh, another like they added more content to it. Where instead of being in a house with a ghost girl, you're on a farm, and this big farmer the ghost guy. Cow? Oh no, it's just some possessed farmer dude who's who will try to eat you, and you oh, have to right. uh you have to you have to whack chickens with a frying pan, and then. Uh, you have to grab poison from the barn, and then you have to turn on this thing. You have to you have to run water into like this like slop that horses might drink out of or whatever. Mm-hmm. Fill that with water. Put the poison in there. Dunk the chicken in the poison water so it's soaked and green. And then when the guy chases you, he will eat the chicken. And you have to keep doing this until he turns green. And then beyond that, while he's green, because if he there's a timer where like. If you don't poison him enough during that frame, he will heal, and you have to kind of start over. This is pacify or phasmophobia. This is still pacify. This is just a okay. this, this is just a farm option. No, it, it's it's fitting <laughs> the the name pacify. Like you have to do something to kind of keep the ghosts at bay. So that yeah, that's it's right. definitely it's definitely not scary. It's it's yeah. just it's more funny and I, I guess a little more approachable. Um, yeah, it 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 took a bit for us, but just because he did heal and. That, you know, that took us back time-wise, and he got so fast that th- there's, um, in that in that barn level, when you go all the way out back into the backyard, there is a windmill, mm-hmm. and inside the windmill is just, like, angel statue, like a, like, a big one, but you can find a little angel statue inside that house, and when you bring that into the windmill, this, like, thing of sparks kind of fly down, and it heals you, so, like, if you're in cap, because... The, uh, when the when the big dude bites you, you're not dead. Like your your camera view is like super stretched, like far out, where you kind of look like intoxicated almost, and you're like slow and you're crippled, and you have to like you have to heal by going into that windmill. This dude was so fast near the end of the game that he just kept hovering around that windmill, even running into the windmill. So we had to keep like leaving the doorway, re-entering the doorway just to get healed, and, like, it's like one of us just had to deal with that while the other two were getting poison and doing a whole method of dunking the chickens while this person was being, like, a distraction. It was just ridiculous. If you didn't have multiple people, would it have been AI doing that th- that stuff, or is it all just kind of on you? Um, or can you only play it with a minimum of a certain number of players? I think only the enemy can be AI. I don't think you can have bots for okay. partners. Yeah, because I think normally you can have it's supposed to be like up to four people, so yeah. I could see how the game would go by a little faster with that. But three, you know, we we made it work though. We did it. We did that too. So we beat both versions in one night, and you know, not too bad for like a five dollar game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of a five dollar game, Matt, how long before Epic Games buys the developers behind Among Us? Oof, a year. 
All right, mark it down, folks. Put that on your bingo cards. Uh, this week, Epic Games announced the purchase or acquisition of Mediatonic, um, developers behind last year's breakout hit Fall Guys. Um, I did not realize the fall, the the developers were also behind Hot's a Full Boyfriend. Um, but oh, I yeah. didn't know that either. Yeah, that was in their little press release. Uh, they just announced that, uh, of course, they're. Epic and Mediatonic both independently join, uh, announced that Mediatonic will be joining the Epic Games family. Um, since the game launched in August, uh, the team had already grown from 35 to over 150, um, but there's still the developers still have bigger plans, and by joining Epic, they hope to achieve those plans. Um, the little sign-off just says that joining forces with Epic will accelerate plans to improve improve the game and bring Fall Guys to as many players as possible while continuing to support the community. Do you think they will put a Fall Guy in Fortnite and he will be the odd job, odd job of Fortnite? <laughs> Do they already have short characters in Fortnite like that? Hmm. I feel like they all have to be of a certain height. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, they usually all share like a similar character model. But put them in, in the, Fortnite! Yeah, even their odd characters, none of them are short. Yeah, or make it weird. Yeah, or make it real weird and like stretch them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could see that. Go weird, uh, weird uh, Mario style. So this uh, is the next in line. So who do we have? We've we've got which free to play games are all under the hood now. Okay, first, does Fall Guys go free to play in the wake of this? Of course, at some yeah. point. So you got A Fortnite. Year. You got Rocket League. I guess you get a Jellyman car or something like that in in Rocket League. <laughs> Probably. Uh, did Epic buy anybody else? Not yet. Not yet. Who's the next one to buy besides the Among Us developers? What they should do is buy a uh, a good shoot a good shooter team and make a free to play Unreal tournament. Uh, yeah. yeah. Does why like... didn't they buy it? No, I wasn't expecting you to say those words. So like, I I, I felt hopeful for a second and then immediately scorned. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> it burns twice. It burns twice. You know what else burns twice? Artifact. Ugh. Artifact Classic now free to play for everybody. Artifact Foundry also now free to play for everybody. Matt looks upset, but before we hear his uh, hot reactions. So, uh, Valve announced this week final changes to Artifact Classic, which would be the original game that was, you know, purchasable for real money a few years ago. Uh, now the game is free for everybody. All players get every card for free, and you no longer are able to buy card packs. Paid players' existing cards have been converted into special collector's edition versions, which will remain marketable. Marketplace integration has been removed from the game. That doesn't make any sense to me. Paid event tickets have been removed, and customers who paid for the game will still earn packs of collector's edition cards for playing. Players who got the game for free will not. And then Artifact 2.0, or as it is now known, Artifact Foundry, has gone free to play for everybody. Uh, Players gain access to cards by playing the game, and all cards are earned this way. No cards or packs will be for sale, and Artifact Foundry cards are not marketable. All final card, all final card art that was in the pipeline is now in the game. Uh, I think that what they said as part of this as well. I don't have it jotted down here, but that they're you know, Artifact Foundry is done. There's still some stuff they're going to do for art and polish uh, in future updates, but the core of the actual game is is there and working and. They will continue to, or you know, now it's it's ready to play, and they'll continue to polish it down the line. Why, uh, why the disappointment, Matt? Well, I thought this would be exciting. Well, the support is done. Like, there's going to be no more new cards. Like, once once we know the good decks, it's over. Like, there's there's no more influx no. of things. That and that kind of sucks. And I think people are going to move on from this quite fast. And then you're already dividing your small audience between two games. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm my, I, I'm, my biggest problem with, um, what is now Foundry was the lack of card art. Like, a lot of the stick fingers started to blend together. So, uh, I, I'll go back and, and probably play that here, uh, in, at some point just to see. But, uh, yeah, no, the, 
I was really hoping that this would like kind of like go and it would keep adding to it with new cards or, and, and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I, I think I don't know what happened here. <laughs> it, no talk of this coming to mobile, right? As it was meant to. Uh, I, I didn't see anything. <laughs> Uh, and I think the marketplace integration thing, uh, I think that, I just don't, the store used to be in the game. Like, you could, like, openly just sell right from the game. Now you have to deal with probably just from the Steam client. Like oh, you do okay. with, like, Dota stuff, uh, the PUBG stuff, knife skins, you know, all the good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what other card games are out there like this competitively that are still... Is Hearthstone still doing well? I feel like Buzz on that. I feel like Buzz on a lot of these types of games has died down because you couldn't do live tournaments last year, uh, or you still can't. But uh, like, are other games in this genre still kind of bumping? I mean, I, according to BlizzCon, Hearthstone is still thriving. I would say I think Hearthstone, if anything, it's gotten more popular. They've added that. Sure. They added two new modes. The one was like a. Um, actually, it was a unique take on the. Um, Dota chest idea uh, is completely different the way it plays, but uh, but it's still like you know nine nine people in a room. You have health if you lose your 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 selected duel, and then you know you get eliminated. But I thought it was a real unique way of doing it in a card game. I think it made a lot of sense. I just don't know the cards well enough to play it. Um, yeah, and they just added still happening. Yeah, and they, uh, all right, in the Hearthstone, there was another mode they just added, but I don't know what that is. You got magic, magic's never going to go away, I feel like, at this point, so. Yeah. Um, sure. I don't know, what's the, what's another card game out there? There's, there's at least one more I can't think of. Gwent. NBA 2K21? <laughs> Which one did you say, Mark? Sorry. <laughs> Gwent. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that classic. It's not as good that as The Witcher 3's Gwent. Rocking the charts. Uh, yeah, but no, NBA 2K21 is a card game. Uh, yeah, I I fired up that their card game in NBA 2K21, and I I I leveled up my LeBron James. I sorry, I evolved my LeBron James from a gold from a green to a gold or a green. I don't know what call, whatever. Um, yeah, this game is kind of a surprise. NBA 2K21 uh, shadow dropped on Game Pass this week, and coincidentally, I've had this strange basketball. All right, I need to complain for a second. I've had the basketball itch for a little while now. Mm. And I keep hovering over the let me sign up for the NBA League Pass thing and whatever. I legitimately went to go buy, spend real money, and buy the season League Pass, whatever the heck it is, for NBA. So you can just watch all teams, commercial free, whatever. And it's like 125 bucks. And I'm like, all right, it's a, it's a big investment, but let's do it, man. Like I, if I'm going to get into watching basketball, let's go, let's might as well. Right. I sure. go to make the purchase. I literally have the in-app purchase thing pulled up on my phone. It is not $124.99. It is $124.99 for a six month trial that would last me until September. At which point my annual subscription would be charged for two hundred and fifty-five dollars. So, in the course of eighteen months, I'd be spending a hundred or three hundred and something dollars. And I was like, "I'm just not going to watch basketball, not at all." Um, and the excitement of watching basketball was only, uh, you know, exponentially increased after playing some NBA 2K21 this week. But yeah, I still don't know. I, I got to scratch this itch somehow. Maybe playing this game's going to do it. I have no idea. I don't know what I want. I, it, it started because NBA Jam came back into my life, and I've been playing that on and off, but then it just keeps getting worse and worse, and here we are. But I did play NBA 2K21. I played first. Uh, it's Hold, wait, hold on. I, it's important to note that this is the previous-gen version on Game Pass. Game Pass. Yeah, they did not bump it up. Because um, they are completely, well, not completely different games, but they're different games. Yeah, could you pay the difference to get an upgrade? I did not look or, at that because I just did it right from the Game Pass app, and it was there on my console. So I will actually look at that next time because so I probably I will did play it this the again. Game Pass app, and it was not on my console. I was super stoked to jump in and play uh, that night with my brother, and we kind of did a quick FaceTime, and he was ready to roll. I'm ready to roll. I turn on the Xbox. It didn't even push to the Xbox, and I'm like, all right, sick. So I yanked the Xbox out of the wall. 
didn't even bother to like put my hands on the cables. I just pulled hard. No, I carried it up, plugged it into Ethernet to actually install the stupid thing as quickly as possible. Uh, he and I played head to head and had the most fun competitive time I've had in a video game in a long time. Like, I feel like we were both really pushy because I feel like anytime we've played games like this before, you kind of hit that moment where you're like, you're a couple points ahead, so you're like, ah, I'm going to make some stupid shots or, or just do some dumb stuff because I feel bad that I'm ahead. But neither of us, like, conceded, but we were all, I don't, it just, it felt really good. Like, it felt like we were actually, like, doing our best and playing really well. And, um, like, the first quarter, as I'm reacclimating myself with the controls, he's, like, 12 points ahead, but then I close the gap and we get into the second. It just, all throughout, like, super close game, a lot of fun, to the point where we literally down to the final few seconds of the fourth quarter, he's kind of ahead, and then I tied it up somehow miraculously just from, like, dumb fouls or something by the end. We go into overtime, and then he... I don't know what happened. I don't know if the wind just fell out of him at that point, but I just raced past him, and even the commentators are like, this is not the same team that we saw in the first quarter of the game today, Chuck. <laughs> like, just... I don't know. I don't know what happened, but even, nonetheless, like, we had so much fun just playing around with it. And then... um. I jumped in, I did check out a couple, because I still had that itch, and then trying to buy the stupid service just, you know, deflated me from wanting to watch basketball. Uh, so I was like, all right, what other modes do they have? So I tried some of the weird card pack thing. I, It's kind of, I, chasing the card packs <laughs> seems like a mess that I don't want to be a part of, but the modes themselves, like you're kind of like building a team of three to then take onto the court for 3v3 things. It's not terrible, but then it's like, you get better stats by getting shoe cards, and then you apply the shoe card, but you can only put the shoe card on the player if the player is sponsored by that shoe brand. So, like, I, I unlocked a Reebok card, but it didn't have anybody sponsored by Reebok, so I couldn't put shoes on them. Not that they're barefoot, but I just can't upgrade. I don't know, man. I have to wear a 76 logo, 76ers logo, even though they make you make up a custom team name. So... It's weird. It's a, it, but I, I get where they're going at. It also just seems like any way they can get in-app purchases, because uh, that's really what they're selling here. The thing the- I absolutely hate uh, with like hockey or NHL, Madden, and now this was I accidentally did select that when um, I'm sure we'll talk about that here in a second. But uh, when we were trying to figure out what to play, all three of us. I did select the my team thing to see what was up, but then I got launched into a whole cinematic and it made me do a card pack and all this stuff. The thing I hate the most about these modes that Madden actually did fix in this year's game, or maybe they may have fixed it, I just didn't notice, is the contract card. That is the most BS thing in the world. Like, you can only have a player for so many games and you have to find a way to get a contract card to keep that player. Like, that is so dumb. Like, he will stay in your, he will stay on as a card, but he's not available to use as a as a um as a player when you whenever you play the ai or another uh real opponent online but that stuff's like the the crappiest like uh mechanic ever and that's one of the things why i love always loved mlb the show's mode with this like it's they still have all the same gimmicks um you know like you can't really power up a card uh one of my favorite things the mlb does is like they actually take real life matchups into account and bump stats regarding that um, but like, there's no contract card, so once you have the card, it's always there. So it feels like collecting actual like cards. And then uh, to further your point on why MLBs is better, you can create your own jerseys as soon as you name your team. Yeah, that that seemed weird that I couldn't do that. It was like, hey, what do you want your team to be called? And then it was like, cool, you're you're the 76ers. And I'm like, okay, I, I guess so. The yeah, Madden's the same uh, way. And then, yeah, I mean, speaking of confusing interfaces, then uh, Friday night, Matt, my brother, and I decide, let's let's do this. We're going to jump in. We're going to play the three of us against maybe another squad of three human beings, hopefully. No, not at all. Because how do you know? Uh, it took us forever to figure out actually how to play together. Like, there's no clean way that says, like, like there is an option that says play with friends. But it's the literal last option that is 
off the screen after you go into quick play. Like you have to go into quick play and then go all there's the way not off even, the screen to the right. There's not even like a good arrow that says, hey, there's more modes. <laughs> no, it literally looks like it's cut off like there's nothing. It looks like you've got five modes and none of them are that. You finally get to it. And then it's like, do you want private match? Do you want private team match? It, it, I don't, it, it's very bizarre. Um, we do finally get going though. And my brother's like, who do you guys want to be? And I just, I was like, I don't know, man, I've been playing as the Nets. I, we can be the Nets, whatever. I, I'm not, whatever. So he just kind of locks us into the Nets and then decides, yeah, why don't we just play against all-time Chicago Bulls? <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's Dennis Rodman. And even listeners, if, if you're not familiar, like, you should know these names. Yeah. Dennis Rodman, Scottie Pippen, and Michael Jordan. Yeah. Right there, you're done. But then you also have Derrick Rose from his Chicago Bulls uh, days, and then uh, Gilmore from. I don't know. I did not know Gilmore. Seventies. That was the only player I didn't know on that Bulls team. But like, it's the best <laughs> team that ever has been. And uh, so he puts us up there, and this is the second <coughs> actual game that I've played since you know jumping into this. I still don't know how to. At this point, I didn't know how to like try to block a pass right button wise because there's also no controller map you can ever look at um so yeah he puts us up against them and like matt what was it like the end of the first quarter and it was like 26 to 6 uh no we it oh yeah the first quarter i was gonna say at halftime when we backed out we had 16 points i was trying to make an optimistic comment I was like hey guys could be worse we could have 14 points you know <laughs> Yeah. Meanwhile, the other team at 46, team but... 46, yeah. So we backed out, and then it was like, okay, why don't we switch teams a little bit, and then we'll go up against the worst team in the league. So we... Uh, I look up the current rankings, worst team in the league against us, and I don't know why he decides to choose the Knicks without... Like, we didn't... He just went for it, and, like, they're not doing so hot. Their stats in the game are not super great. So we don't do great either. Even the worst team in the league is, is walking over us. And then finally... We're like, okay, we're, I feel like we've got our feet going now. Why don't we do it? So then he spins us in as the all-time Chicago Bulls. Um, we go up against, I think, the Phoenix Suns, mm -hmm. uh, current Phoenix Suns. And we had a good uh, a good run of it. Uh, or we did two games as the Bulls. Yeah. And I think both times we did the same thing, right? Yeah. He was uh, mm -hmm. Michael Jordan. I played as Scottie Pippen and you played as Dennis Robin. The hot rod. That was the one cool thing about this is like you get to be a single player where when him and I went head to head, you know, you're controlling all five players that are on the court at one time. But this we're playing and we're each one player. So you really have to like play your role. You know what I mean? It's, it's not different from any other video game where you have a specific role you have to fit into and whatever. Um, and the thing I've always been bad at even when I was like gym class playing real life basketball is like actually sticking the person. And I'm terrible at it in video game version of basketball <laughs> as well. But you know, you cut, you, you learn and you grow and you change. And we, I think we did pretty well. Um, yeah, no, that was a lot of fun. It, yeah. And just having, just laughing the whole time. Like it's, it's never, I think also the fact that it was us versus AI made it a little less comp If we had oh, been yeah. three other people and trash talking and whatever, it would have been a different, different vibe but it was it was a good time yeah that's the part that's frustrating there 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 was a mode um called i think it was called the park at one point i think they changed the names of it a couple times just to like update it or whatever but essentially like you go into a lobby and it's like all these courts and you just like walk around you like go to the court and you just there's like a pickup game as if like you were actually in like i don't know like harlem or something like that you just kind of get in line and you wait your turn and you play some random teammates or you can party up I was thinking this was in this game. It sure is, just on the next-gen versions. So they took out a whole mode, probably for the copy that sold the absolute most of any of the copies, and made it a next-gen thing, and that kind of sucked, because I thought that was the mode we were going to go into, and when I booted it for the first time, and I couldn't find it, I was a little deflated. But no, we found this mode, and I think we had, I probably, we probably had more fun doing what we did, and I kind of want to do that again. That was a lot of, a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I'm in to do that more. Um, I'm looking here at the back of my PS3 copy of NBA Jam to see if it offered mm. what we're looking for. This is only going to be two-on-two co-op. 
Because they have this. You can buy backwards compatible on Xbox. I was thinking maybe we could do some. Well, hey, we could do the three of us and my brother and grab that NBA Jam game and play online this did you guys play this one the revival they did in like 2010 or whatever no no i only played uh blitz i played that revival right. y'all might have something showing up in your xbox stores recently Ooh. or soon Ooh. i feel like being <laughs> being froggy here it's it's very good if you like the classic uh midway ea or uh, nba jam i thought they did a pretty good job with this one back when it came out definitely a different vibe but still you know still true to it i think yeah, I'm gonna I, go um, back to 2K. I'm gonna mess around. Always, they always have the best dynasty mode. I will, no matter, no matter what game. I mean, even MLB the Show can't touch the NBA's one. I always love playing these games and like taking either the Wizards or one of the worst teams, intentionally tanking, making money so I can relocate my team to some fucking random spot, and then you know trying to build a championship team, even though I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Um, that's always a lot of fun. I always crash and burn after like three years, but, um, I hope it, I want to do something like that. I would love to Is look that like the GM mode. Yeah. Kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, I would actually like to see like, you know, if you want to keep that basketball ish going, I don't mind playing these games. And if Sean wanted to do it, like if you, we could probably make one of those my league things work where we kind of not all 82 games, of course, but like narrow down the, the games probably take out half the teams and then we just kind of roll with something we can do like a fantasy draft around that as well bet you that would be fun yeah. um yeah i think that'd be cool like i want to see like we can make our own characters and put them in somehow i guess i don't know like so that I, that's one of the things that ui sucks like there's the whole my player thing but it took me right into like the career thing so i don't know if i'm yeah. creating a character for like my profile or for that I, and then it did change when we went into that because my default character was not the default character. We were all confused as to why I was not the default character. Yeah. yeah. I, like, I don't know. I made a shoe at some point, but it told me I had to spend 2K money to put my shoe on my player. And then I made Carl Bertana Nanaluski from Aqua Team, but he doesn't look at all like <laughs> Carl. He just has a bad mustache and he's got a mildly receding hairline because you can't go full bald. I kind of want to do the scan my face thing and see how that works out. <laughs> I thought about that, but I figured 2K is just going to steal my face data and sell it to some. I, Oh, true. I'll still do it. You know what? It's probably, yeah. I'll, like, um, eat, I made a whole freaking uh, video series out of 2K servers, uh, so uh, they can right, have my right. face. Yeah. Uh, also, that's the other problem with this game, is just like wrestling. As simple as it should be, it's definitely overcomplicated, uh, but that's always been 2K for the last couple of years, just like wrestling has been, so... Uh, well, it's a shame, dude. Like, I, I wish there could be just, you know, a good... <laughs> like there's never there's always with all sports games and it's such a shame like they all have these like i don't know it's like going and getting like a good burger but like you can only eat outside when it's raining and there's like crows pecking at your butt and then like so many that's the I was going to say, so many of these games try to implement, like, a simple button, but it's too simple. Like, NHL just does pass and shoot. Like, there, you can do – there's more buttons. You can do a little bit more than just pass and shoot. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Just play the MLB The Show. It's the, it's the best of the best. Yeah. And that will be out on everything this year. 420. So play it. Yeah. Uh, speaking of on everything, Matt, you've been playing a little bit of that Call of Duty update since the, uh... Season, season 2, 2021. That's why I've been calling it. That's to not get confused with Season 2, 2020, you know? Uh... Right. I, so, full disclosure, I never went back to play Black Ops because I do genuinely hate that multiplayer experience. So, uh, did not do any of the Outbreak stuff over on that side. But in Warzone, they added a new location. It's called Shipwreck. So uh, the cinematic kind of going into this is a ship. Um, there was some Easter egg stuff at the end of Season 1 with uh, some radio chatter in Russian. And if you translated it, it was like people being attacked by something on a ship. And you, at, towards the end of the season, you saw the ship far away with like this ominous cloud uh, over top of it. Well, of course, now it has arrived in Verdansk. On, on the shore near prison in, like, the southeast corner of the map. Uh, and if you go in there, you can... There's, like, a little computer for you to activate zombies. Uh, and zombies come uh, come out. They randomly spawn on, like, this ground area. 
And um, it becomes like a little mini game. I, like you are also fighting off other people that may have landed there or are coming there. Uh, but you're also fighting zombies, and on the 40th, uh, 40 zombies that spawn, uh, you get a special key card for a crate, uh, an exclusive crate that is in that ship, and you get some really cool uh, drops. Whether it's like a amplified gas mask, um, like it, like the top tier stuff you can get like randomly from like orange boxes, is like what you're getting out of this. And the cool thing is you can keep doing it as many times as you want, as long as the circle allows you or whatever. So you could hit that button four times if you wanted to, and keep getting stuff from that um, from that crate. Now you probably will want to want to end up getting your loadout at some point because your guns are customized to you. These are just random drops, high end drops, but still random. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I thought that was a nice little. Nice little ad there uh, in the corner uh, that, that makes it interesting. It's kind of weird, though, because just shipwreck is, like, crossed out in red to indicate zombies. And they added new, like, m- uh, like nuclear bunkers. They took out some, like, these statues that were around Verdansk and put in these bunkers that you can go into. There are computers there as well. So I'm kind of thinking maybe the spread of the zombies is going to continue to kind of go into more of Verdansk areas. Uh, as the season goes along, I think that would be a cool little thing, uh, as they, you know, take over Verdansk. Uh, and then the last thing they did, they took out the train system, which was the biggest waste that I called back, uh, last year in the middle of the summer, uh, when they added that. Um, yeah, I can, I can absolutely tell you I've only rode the train one time and that was just to see what it did. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that, but that's, that's about it, at least on the... Warzone side of it, like uh, they really don't update Modern Warfare much. They just cycle the playlist and stuff, but they don't, they're not really adding guns or anything to that. It's all Black Ops related stuff. Uh, they did add new two new guns, which of course you can use in Warzone because of all the cross compatibility between that. But uh, yeah, no, like I said, I really don't really play Black Ops unless I need to to rank up a gun, and I hate doing it. And I just play on Nuketown, yeah. the Nuketown twenty four seven playlist, so I don't even see any of the other maps. What a waste. I, you think this year's game will pull you back into that side, or? Uh, I mean, we'll see. I'm hoping. Uh, I'm hoping it's good. Um, it, they're gonna do. I, I'm curious to see who does it, cause everyone said, you know, it's supposed to be Sledgehammer's turn, but they were the ones that were written off when Black Ops Four kind of dropped into there. So I don't know. If they're making it in tandem with Infinity War, I kind of don't know what to expect. Yeah. The rumor is is World War Three, but does it is it like tied into Modern Warfare at all, or is it going to be its own thing following World War Two? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah. uh, I can see them making it canon somehow. I just don't know how they how they'll approach it and who does what and uh, and whatever. Because Treyarch worked on the multiplayer, but Raven Software was the one who did the campaign, so. Uh, for Black Ops, uh, Cold War, that is. So, I don't know. It might be some kind of mix like that. Developer Arc System Works, uh, behind Guilty Gear Strive, has announced that following the recent open beta test, the game is being delayed from April 9th, 2021 to June 11th. And as I have it written here, June 11th, 2011. So, I guess they're delaying it backwards in time. Um... I made a fun typo. You know what's fun about this typo? I made that typo, fixed that typo, and then apparently put the typo back somehow. That's what my brain did. Uh, Guilty Gear Strive, were you guys looking forward to this one at all? Uh, yeah, because, I mean, my last Guilty Gear experience wasn't the greatest. Uh, I think I went into, what, Zerd Rev 2, I think? Yeah. And I wanted to try to story mode and boy did i get story because yeah. there is no gameplay and i did not know that yeah. so i l- uninstalled it <laughs> yeah. i uh, Ho- hope this plays different yeah i played a bit of one of those i forget which I- i've tried a couple of them but like i felt like by the time i was playing those games i was already way too past the prime of them and i didn't know what i was doing or what i was getting into i feel like it would be nice sure. to get into one kind of from the ground floor so um, but I think it's a two month delay, but I think also in that two months, a lot could happen in the fighting game scene. I, I feel like 
we're like poised for a bunch of fighting game announcements pretty soon here. I don't know why, but the demo's still available, right? I don't know. I know because, that we're in open beta. Because that has a training mode, and that's unheard of for a demo. Interesting. Usually it's just an online thing, and that's it. Yeah. So it's cool yeah. that you can at least maybe get some practice in. Yeah, I'll have to look and see if it's still on PS4. Based off um, the uh, the press release, uh, they used the term after the recent open beta test, so I, I have a feeling that it's closed at this point. Hmm. Unless there's a demo, I don't know though. I don't follow this game, so I don't know. No, I'll, I'll peek at it while we're on break, and when we get back, we've got new game announcements to talk about, a game that lasts forever, games from forever, and so much more. Right after this. Galaxy developer 17 bit has announced survival adventure game Song in the Smoke for PlayStation VR, Oculus Rift, and Oculus Quest. Launching this spring, a quote from 17 bit founder and creative lead Jake Kazdal says At 17 bit, we love to create fresh takes on existing genres, from our light hearted turn based strategy game Skulls of the Shogun to the modernized space shooter Galaxy. With Song in the Smoke, we dove even deeper into Unknown Territory, a virtual reality survival adventure with all new rules and a completely new medium. Song in the Smoke is unlike anything we've done before, and it's our most ambitious title yet. The experience is so completely immersive and engaging. The forest is alive all around you in the extra dimension provided by VR. We're thrilled to be offering an intense adventure that couldn't be captured in any other way. This game looks really cool. They've got, um... The artist behind uh, Blood, The Last Vampire, uh, and some other things. like The art, I think, looks really cool. The game looks really interesting, but I don't have a way to play it. I got a PlayStation VR, and then, Mark, over on your side of the fence, like, no announcement for uh, the Index, specifically, but can you... You probably can't, can you? Because you'd have to go through the Oculus Store to get it, and then is the it's not even compatible at that point. What, for me to play this? Yeah, if you were going to play it with the Index, you couldn't, right? It it depends. Um, if it ever reaches Steam, it will it will say what headsets it will support. Um, if, it, if it supports the Vive, it will support the Index. Okay. That's usually how that goes. Even though, like, the controllers, like, like if a VR game has a, has a Vive support and it works with Index, it will still show the control scheme as if you had Vive controllers, but you can easily just you know, remap stuff if you need to, but I think that's the only way. And, uh, the, the art, um, for this, uh, is it Katsuya Tarada? I think is his name. Dude, that's the artist who did all that art for the old Zelda games. Oh, wow. Like, you could see it immediately. Yeah, it looked like Ganon, like, in the, in the thing. But I yeah. did not realize that was the exact same. Yeah, that's really cool. So cool. Yeah, I don't know. It looks neat. Um, I know that Jake was just on 8-4 Play two weeks ago. And they were asking... Okay, no, I see. I'm looking at this most recent episode of 8-4 Play. Jake Kasdahl returns to talk about his newly announced VR title. So I guess if you want to hear more about it straight from um, 17-Bit founder... Uh, check out the latest episode of 8-4 Play. Yeah, I'm intrigued by this. Uh, there's still a few reasons that I'd like to grab a PSVR. Um, I, Resident Evil 7 is already kind of off that list since I played through it. I don't know that I'd play through it again, but maybe. Um, but there's still a couple things where I'm like, ah, maybe. Um, and this is definitely one of them. But Yeah, I think the hardest thing, just like the 3DS and the... Uh, maybe the Wii or Wii U suffered from this, but, like, mostly the 3DS, from what I can remember. But 3DS and VR, it's hard to show raw gameplay and try to pitch that through a flat trailer. 
Yeah. Like, 3DS was always, like, low-quality looking stuff, but then when you played a game, it was, like, buttery smooth, and, like, VR, you know, there's that whole, like, level of depth that just can't be captured and translated yeah. to, like, a, a trailer, so it's it, it's it's a little hard to try to get a good grasp or an idea until you play it. It's kind of risky, Did this one but... grab you? This had some TM vibes to me, but I don't know. You, you know uh, TM better than I. I'm kind of picky about survival games. I think o- over time they just get a little taxing and takes its toll on me. So when they try to be like too survivally, you know, um, that can be a little like overwhelming at times because it feels like you just never get a break from like taking care of something. Mm-hmm. Uh, I-, I think I would have to actually like look at the game, like maybe try a demo or something. Because just right now it's just a little like I can't tell if it's like a finished product, like, if this is, like, the visuals that they're going to stay with or if it's going to change at all. And maybe the visuals won't matter too much if, you know, if the game is cool, but, like, I I don't know how it exactly plays yet, so it's uh, too early to say, I think. But I am definitely interested. Out this spring, so stay tuned. I I still, I haven't listened to Age 4 yet, but I want to hear what what more they talk about, because that stuff's always exciting to hear, kind of, like, like, I'm sure there's a story about how they got that artist. You know what I mean? That he probably shares. So that's... I'm intrigued. Also announced this week, Blaster Master Zero 3 coming to PlayStation 4, Switch, and PC July 29th for $14.99. Developer Indie Creates announced that this is the final installment of the story they set out with Blaster Master Zero. I bought that Zero 2 and then never finished it. But I liked the first one quite a bit. Um, you were into that one too, Mark, were you not? Yeah, I started over. I still haven't finished it. But I yeah, like that, it. Yeah, and then that other uh, Azure Striker Gunvolt game, that most, I forget what the most recent was. Like, the uh, Luminous, Luminous Avenger? Avenger? Yeah. Dude, that one's so cool. I didn't finish that one either. Or if I did, I don't, I don't even know. I didn't, but I enjoyed what I played so far. Yeah, yeah. And another game I keep forgetting about, despite it being my favorite one of 2021 so far, Loop Hero made its triumphant debut March 4th. We've all been playing the demo on and off and very excited about it. You guys have played some of the final product now that it's out. Mm-hmm. Loop Hero. Uh, it was cool booting it up and you just get like 10 achievements from the start. Oh, nice. <laughs> carried your save over, so it's just like, boom! And like, I can't remember if these were options in the demo. Or if they, like, did it through updates or something, because I didn't check whenever they were updating. I never went back to the demo. But, like, uh, it has, like, a slight, like, CRT filter, like, scan lines on it. Um, You can change the way the font looks. And they have, like, a dyslexia-friendly, like, font. So it's it's not, like, it doesn't look like old, like, old-timey medieval font. It's just, like, a nice, clean Huh. Uh, like like, like sans serif thing, and I I kind of yeah. like it with the scan lines. Like I'm playing it with that, and there's options now too. The game can automatically pause after each fight, and after, and in each time you reach the bonfire, it will automatically pause for you in case Ooh. like you're you know maybe you missed something or you're going too fast and you wanted to leave, but maybe you overstepped the bonfire to stop the game in time to try to leave with all your stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, I've definitely had moments like that where I'm like, did I? Oh, okay, I'm already. That's, <laughs> I guess we're going. Seem like cool little quality of life improvements there. I kind of. Yeah, I'm going to fire it up. I still want there to be a better indicator of, like, you can retreat at the bonfire. Because unless you know where to click, because I forgot my first run and it kind of mm-hmm. screwed me uh, on, on a run. Uh, my first game, you know what? my first loop back. Yeah, cause, uh, cause, cause it's been a while. I forgot that like, that like the speed multiplier is at the top mm-hmm. to like go but normal in two times. And I kept thinking the dude running in the corner meant speed up the game, oh. and it's actually retreat. So maybe they should add like a little arrow next to him or something, or yeah, made it or something, or yeah, sorry, just just illuminator or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like did you guys? Was was the rogue class available in the demo? No. Yeah, the demo. All I remember is just kind of having that single option, and then so uh, you can upgrade the town a little bit. But yeah, I mean, wait. So, Mark, did you get through the first expedition yet? Ooh, does that involve any like boss fights? Or yeah, it went. 
getting through the first expedition would be killing the lich. I've okay. I've never defeated the lich. So wait, did you find a different class then? Because I so I got through the first ex- expedition, and I actually played a little bit of the second one. Uh, hmm. And I could not. It seemed like I was still warrior class, unless I'm not seeing something. Um, um I I think it's. I don't know if it's called the bar, but there's like a building you can construct that is oh, okay. similar to that. That unlocks the rogue class. Okay. Maybe that's and, what it is. Um what it what it does is now you can equip two melee weapons. It uh it removes you can't you can't equip shields anymore. But now you can equip boots that do all different things. And every time you go to the bonfire, you re roll your entire inventory. And you have like a little bag in a corner that so whenever you kill enemies, you 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 take them as trophies, dude. Dude. So so like so I don't think yeah because I don't think you can equip rings either. Um, All right. We gotta, yeah, like they they, they change it up a bit. Stuff. I gotta go. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I like it. Huh. Feels like I'm stuck here. So I beat the first ex- expedition, but I feel like the second one caused. Uh, it it really doesn't change the game. Not that I expected it to, but like all it really does is like, hey, the enemies are now like level one from the start, and uh, you get a, I think a bump in uh, like your warrior class stats, and and that's it. And you can see the picture of like the boss. It looks a little bit different, but hmm. that's it. And I feel like the extra difficulty. I'm just stuck because I probably beat the lich. A little too soon, based on my infrastructure on my town. So I don't know if I should just like do three laps around the second one, or if I should just try to keep beating the first loop again. Uh, and you do get a specific resource by beating the lich. I forget what it is, but that might help you with other things. And and then the other thing is like now I need like I need wood for I think the next thing stable wood. Sorry. Uh, for the next thing and i don't know how to acquire that and i think that's just like me I, I have to pay more attention to what resources i'm getting at different times but i kind of wish sometimes like because the cards do lead you to like know like hey you get a resource sometimes i wish it would be like hey if you're going through the grove you're getting wood all the time maybe it does say it that does give you the little icon maybe and maybe that's where i'm not paying attention enough to like know the differences between the icons and maybe that's on me but I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I sometimes just want a little bit clearer picture of like where do I go with this game, or like what what do I do? What cards? Like, I, yeah, because I built the farm, but the the card that came with it is locked, and I don't know how to unlock it. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It's not quite clear. What, like, uh, it could totally be my fault. In your deck. What was that? Uh, you might have too many cards in your deck. No, it's not that. It's not that. I know. Have you used the village and the wheat fields? You see, I, I I don't I don't know what I'm doing with the okay. Um, what, when you because I think the farm unlocks the village card if I remember correctly. When you yeah. place that down, um, you can only place the wheat fields adjacent to the village. You can't place them anywhere else. Um, and like the and, village and, and, gives you that quest, right? That's yeah, the, they, that's they, that card. yeah. They give you the quest, so like certain enemies will be marked with a crown, and when you do that, you get more experience. And the wheat fields will spawn scarecrows as enemies. None of this sounds even familiar, so that's probably Try why that. I am going nowhere in this game. <laughs> All right, yeah, well, put uh, the village card in your deck, and then play the village card um, to start. Okay. So, yeah. despite me turning on high definition text as my default, I still can't read. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a lot, dude. Like it's it's a lot, and like honestly, like it is a lot. If you rewind the tape here, you'll see my face going agape as you guys describe some of the things you're seeing. So, I think there's still a lot of depth to this that we've yet to uncover. Um, Scarecrow's cool yeah. design. Yeah, it's it's so cool looking, and it's funny. Like you know, in the wake of playing that demo, I had jumped into all those card games, and there's a reason why. Like I kept jumping from one to the other. Like nothing quite scratches the itch like this. I think there's the combination of the character moving its way around the loop, that combat element to it, with the deck building and the deck building being so like temporary. There's something just about this game that is so good. Um, I know it just came out on Steam on the 4th, but have they said anything about other platforms? Because I suffer from uh, hating playing games on this computer now, which is not something I always had, but since work from home, like, I hate being in this chair when I don't have to be. You know what I mean? Like, 
Mm. I can't really imagine this being on other platforms at the moment. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's possible, but like, it's just hard for me to picture it at the moment. Just oh, I have um, it on an iPad or Switch. I, I yeah, like I think just just because of like. Like just news wise, I don't I don't see it getting too much buzz when I feel like it's deserved. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's yeah, getting yeah. buzz. Is it? Uh, Schreier okay. tweeted about it. So, oh, I, so now it's starting. Yeah, okay. Because okay. like whenever I'm checking the like whenever I'm checking Steam, I'm checking what are the top sellers, and I don't even see it in that list yet. But yet, like fools. No, well, it's like, catching on. on. Give it, kid. give it, give it a time. week, give, give it, it a week or two, yeah. dude. Because Schreier was tweeting about it. He was like, you should probably check this out. It's kind of like um, what was that? Oh, what was um, what was the FTL sequel that he was tweeting oh, about that got major uh, buzz? Um, the, is it a the sequel RT- or just like the same people? It's the same people. It's not the sequel. FTL. The same people was their next game. Into the was breach. Into the breach. Like it's the same thing. I think like yeah. you know there was buzz around it, but then Schreier kind of gave it the approval, and then it kind of picked up steam from there. So yeah, uh, hopefully, and then like I can see this definitely work on console. This is what I'm going to just say. Yeah. Throughout the rest of my my time on this podcast or whatever, they put Dota Auto Chess on PlayStation. <laughs> if anything, right. if Auto Chess can work as a control scheme on console, then so be it. Anything can work as a control scheme on console. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. Very Let true. It cook. Yeah, I mean, worst case scenario, I can remote play to my iPad or something from Steam. And do it that way. Uh, that was always working for me with magic and some other stuff. Yeah, and especially yeah. With, like the pause. Like you, I mean, you just be tap it and pause a lot, and that's fine. I think that works just yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, Square has announced uh, an agreement with Forever Entertainment to develop and release multiple game remakes based on one intellectual property owned by Square Enix Japan. The name of this property will be announced separately at the launch of a worldwide marketing campaign. Remakes will feature new visuals while maintaining the same gameplay and scenario from the original versions. Release dates will be announced separately. And then Forever Entertainment will receive 50% of sales of each copy of the game sold across all platforms. Forever Entertainment previously released Panzer Dragoon Remake for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC uh, and Stadia. Uh, They're launching Panzer Dragoon 2's Way the remake in 2021 and i forgot about this one but forever had announced remakes of the house of the dead and the house of the dead 2 from sega my question to you two is what game are forever entertainment not remaking like i mean you could name anything right like from square i feel like there's so many people that are like it's gonna be this but I tell you, like, it's probably not going to be the bouncer, right? <laughs> I don't think they're touching that one. Do you guys have a particular thing you think? No, I guess, wh- what do we hope this is? So it's specifically a, a Square game? A, a one intellectual property owned by Square Enix Japan is what it says here. Owned by Square Enix Japan. Do they own Crystal Dynamics? They do. I am going to say Legacy of Kane. Oh, nice. Yeah, I could see that. Because they've already got enough Tomb Raider remakes and things like that out there. Even if it's not, I'm dreaming anyway. Yeah, (laughs) I I think it's a good dream to have. Look, I know it was just recent, but I think we're ready for the Quiet Man remake. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, put it out there. And then we'll get a sequel and they can remake the sequel, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if that is what it is? I hope. I never played it, so I can get it this time around, you know? I watched that whole... The, during uh, Extra Life a couple years ago, I watched Giant Bomb's playthrough of that. That mm-hmm. Your eyes I say only, uh, it all that I am ready to embark <laughs> in this adventure. It's just boring, like, dude. Like, besides that trailer from E3 or whatever, whatever it was shown at... Uh, I only see Warrior 64 post when it's on sale, and it's always, like, that, that clip of him, like, sliding off a bald dude's head. Yeah. That's all, that's all I know. He's a, he's a quiet man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm curious to see what these end up being. I The Panzer Dragoon remake got some flack uh, upon release because I think of, like, some frame rate stuff. I played it, and uh, I liked it quite a bit. 
for you know what I mean? It's still Panzer Dragoon, so you got to be in the mood for that. But um, right. you know, considering Panzer Dragoon originally, if you want to get an actual copy of that game for Saturn, you've got to you know sell a car. Uh, it, it was nice to have that in an easy to play fashion uh, on modern platforms. Plus, too, I think like there's so much of that legacy that got forgotten from the Saturn. We talked about that a lot last year with the Saturn at the top of the year, but mm-hmm. Saturn never really came in vogue in America. So the stuff like this just kind of slipped away and, and was forgotten about when I think there's a lot of good, good stuff there. I went after the podcast last week, I went to Burger King. I had had a Burger King craving that I just could not satisfy. And I, I went and I did it and I was happy because not only was it great, this sounds like, I hate, this sounds like an ad, but it's not because we don't, I've never, no. I just looked it up. I was like, I only knew one, okay, you know, geez, sorry guys. You know, there's a good Burger King. Or there's like a good, you've got your, your one until they burn you and then you have to go find a new one, right? Like, you know, the good McDonald's to go to, you know, the good Taco Bell to go to, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Or am yeah. I alone in that? No, no, no. I, I like. I learned over time that like it depends on like who's working. Yeah. And like yeah, if they're sure. new, and like that's usually like when it's the best because they give you too much probably. Then it's like, yeah. but to me, it's like that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. But, but I carefully like, following the recipe as they're trained to, and not taking the shortcuts that they've learned over time. Exactly. Exactly. Those. Those folks. So I went to the Burger King that I had known to be the good one and doing a quick bing, you know, Yelp reviews suggested that, you know, my previous knowledge of what a good Burger King is stood, stood true. Had the only four star in the area where everything else was two and below in like the greater county region. So I was like, all right, let's do this. Turned out to be fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, a little Burger King meal, whatever. But right next to that Burger King, always the lesser known, lesser, lesser loved Arby's. Until this week, when Yacht Club Games announced a Shovel Knight tie-in promotion with Arby's Sandwiches. I, the little trailer was cute, but I don't know what... First off, does Arby's have good toys? Because I feel like it's like the Chick-fil-A thing, where they give you like a cardboard coin that you throw away because it has some like message about being patient or something. Uh, I don't know if I've, I've ever gotten known... a toy from Arby's. Right, like who gets a toy at Arby's? What are you doing? But I, still... The fact that they went from, let's make a small indie game and pretend it was this cool, long lost, whatever, to they actually have kids meal toys at an Arby's, it's pretty wild. Um, yeah, it's really out of left field for me for some reason. I know, like, we were talking about, like, a couple episodes back where, like, you know, there was Nintendo toys at McDonald's and Taco Bell had stuff and Burger King had stuff. Like, I get having toys based off of games. But I was never used to having digital content as the toy. So wait, is this not a toy? What is this? You're you're getting DLC via kids meal, I believe. Okay, because I saw it was like you have to collect seven tokens, but I didn't know what the tokens were. Yeah, they're they're, they're like codes or something that that you put in, and then you can get like Arby's related DLC, like cosmetic stuff. Oh, so that stuff that was in the trailer wasn't just for cute, fun, whatever. Right, it's, it, it's, it's hard to tell because you think they're just, you know, they're just doing, like, a thing. But, no, you actually, like, so you can have the little rat enemies, like, with the little hats and stuff. and. Got it. Okay. It's interesting. Well, fit. there you go. The uh, DLC tokens uh, include a code for DLC in uh, both Shovel Knight Treasure Trove on Switch and PC via Steam. Obviously, the game is out on everything, um, but the codes only work on Switch and Steam. Hmm. Uh, the tokens themselves, they're like little... Dude, look at Arby's innovating the fast food game. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. They give you like a little dumb launcher toy. They got the meat, and then... any, innov- any innovation, you know? <laughs> so my question is, do I have to go to Arby's today? Like, is that where I go next? Oh, no, but I will say that during all the fast food talk, my uh, phone went off with the Taco Bell notification. So that's where I'm at. Maybe maybe today's (laughs) the day for that. Yeah. This is the podcast day is the day uh, 
before I go grocery shopping. So there's basically nothing in the house. And then it's just a decision of what do I want to eat today? And the answer is never go grocery shopping a day earlier. It's always what can I go get quick and fast and not have to think. Arby's had Cuphead stuff. Oh, weird. See, I'm used to like the Arby's uh, social media campaigns where they like would make cardboard cutouts of like Mario's mustache or something. But yeah, I didn't like, realize, yeah, yeah, th- that's what these were actually. You could they were little printed out uh, paper crap things you can make the characters out of. Huh. Interesting. Well, good for their Arby's changing Hit, the game, hitting the indie scene. Yeah. I think there might be Pokemon toys at one of these things soon or now. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, McDonald's. That sounds right. Speaking of Pokemon, I beat Pokemon the Crown Tundra this week. Um, And it's uh, there's still more kind of it's like this Crown Tundra DLC like doesn't really end. So my Cub Fu is still not high enough level to take (laughs) back through those cool towers to get him to evolve. Um. And I, but I'm kind of like dragging him along, doing some things to slowly level him up. But I went through, I caught all of the legendaries that were part of the actual DLC. So you get those cool alternate color uh, legendary birds that I think look really, really rad. Um, you get four of five Reggies. Uh, there's the final Reggie you get is like you go to this temple and there's a statue. The way you unlock the Reggies is you go in and there's lights on the floor and you have to step on them in like to match up the pattern on the Reggie's face. The final temple, the patterns kind of overlap and you have to basically choose which pattern you're going to step on. So I stepped on the one, caught him, did not realize you were choosing. So I ended up with the one I ended up with. Um, I guess the other one I could get through like a wonder trade if I wanted to complete the Pokedex or something. I don't know. Um, but you do all that, you catch Calrex, this kind of weird-looking guy with a big old head who rides a horse. And then you go through and you do the max lair raid piece, where you're kind of doing the underground dungeon crawl, doing big max uh, Dynamax fights one after the other, all the way up until you get to a final boss fight. And right now, the max raids are, or I guess always, it's always some... S- sort of legendary at the end so so far i've caught suicune i've caught um Cressilia. i discovered another one but didn't catch them because i got knocked out before i could randomly one of the final things was not a legendary but maybe a legendary in its own right porygon showed up uh in my heart yeah in your heart it was there yeah uh but yeah they did some interesting things with that crown tundra dlc that I think we're far more interested in the core Pokemon Sword because that that core game still feels so long ago to me, like thinking back through the two DLCs because I think the two DLCs did a much better job at evolving what I wanted out of Pokemon. And even further, I think that 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 new Pokemon Legends... By the way, I looked up... I I think it's Arceus. Yeah? Yeah, the Katakana for the, the same announcement... Like, it is not a k sound. It's a s sound. So I think it's Arceus. I think whoever did that localized trailer didn't understand how to pronounce Arceus. I, it threw everyone through a loop, but I'm pretty sure it's Arceus. Anyway. I would, I would game, still say it anyway. Arceus? Yeah. I'm, yeah. It's, all right. it's, it's too late. <laughs> too late for me. Um, but yeah, that, that game looks even more cool to me. It, it did it initially, but like... Getting further through the Crown Tundra, I'm more and more excited about whatever they do with that game next year. Um, The Diamond and Pearl remakes, now that we've had like another week behind us, I'm like, yeah, like I kind of, I thought about maybe just popping in the DS cart and seeing where my old save file was and just toying around with Diamond and Pearl that way. But yeah, that I don't know. Maybe this fall I might have that itch again to jump in, but I don't know. Uh, Not much more on Pokemon, but did you guys check out that post malone concert last saturday night or what i forgot all about that yeah yeah just straight up ignored it yeah hootie and the blowfish man speaking of things that matt ignored nintendo has released a new update for the wii u system this week bringing the software version up to 5.5.5 the system itself 
Uh, the system update itself does not have a lot of notable content. The patch notes only mention improvements to system stability and adjustments to enhance the usability of the console. Uh, the last system update released for Japanese and North American Wii U consoles was 5.5.3 in September 2018. 5.5.4 came out for European consoles in June 19. Uh, and then, as of the writing of this news story, 5.5.5 did not hit Europe, but only Japan and America. So, hmm. update your Wii U's. I know why they did this. Hot scoop from a shareholder. Oh, yeah, yeah. All they did was put some lines of code of the UI of the Switch. Or not, the, but just the, the interface of the Switch into the Wii U. Just to see which Wii U game they haven't released yet on Switch runs the best with the least amount of effort. Fair. Uh, see, I it. thought um, I thought it was a security measure to make sure that whatever little shit still has my Wii U can't really access anything <laughs> beyond my Nintendo network. And they either. made they made sure it was a worldwide <laughs> thing. That's why it went to Japan as well. That's yeah, but not Europe because no one cares about the Wii U in Europe. Mark, you the, the Wii U debacle. Uh, they keep renaming themselves Ninja. Is that right? Uh, for like a little bit, it like the it, it was Ninja, but then I think most recently it was just some kid named Alex. Hmm. I, I mean, Alex was always the like creator of that meme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've been checking back just to make sure that like my me on my DS hasn't changed or anything. So we're... so far, so good. Since you called Nintendo support. Yeah, I think it's it's been a week. Hmm. It's still a bummer. Yeah. I question. Obviously, the Wii U is out there somewhere. Would you ever buy another Wii U? Uh, if that was the cheapest way to play all of the Paper Mario's, I think that is the route I would go. Interesting. Because I have the GameCube one. Yeah. I don't have the 64 one, and that cost more than it should, uh, cartridge to buy. Yeah. I had it on my Wii U, like a virtual console, and then you could play, you know, the Wii game on there. Right. So, everything was kind of in one spot. Hmm. Sort of. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I don't know. I, I th- like, yeah, like, there has to be something, like, super exclusive and worth it. Like, if if they never port Twilight Princess HD to Switch, yeah, that would be my main reason. Yeah. I still, maybe this year, I we're coming up on the anniversary of me playing Wind Waker, so maybe that something, in, the moon will sit just right and I'll be uh, <laughs> transforming into a wolf, I suppose. Like the Switch will transform into a new 720p 7-inch OLED display perhaps later this year via Bloomberg. Nintendo Company plans to unveil a model of its Switch gaming console equipped with a bigger Samsung-developed OLED display this year. Hoping the larger touchscreen can prop up demand in time for the holidays, people familiar with the plan have said. Samsung Display Company will start a mass production of 7-inch, 720p resolution OLED panels as early as June with an initial monthly, initial monthly target just under a million units. Uh... The displays are slated for shipment to assemblers around July. Representatives for both Nintendo and Samsung Display have declined to comment. Uh, Reportedly, Nintendo decided to go with rigid OLED panels for the new model, uh, a cheaper but less flexible alternative to the type commonly used for high-end smartphones. The latest model will also come with 4K ultra-high definition graphics when paired with TVs. That could intensify a long-standing complaint of developers who have struggled with the difference in resolution between handheld and TV modes uh, and now face a bigger gap between the two. Because right now, they're saying they're going to target 720 and then 4K output, which just no 1080 or maybe 1080 when they can't hit 4K. That sounds like uh, bizarre, but where do we sit on this? I mean, a new Switch model has all but been expected i mean for years now uh especially in the wake of the the switch light but i think also the success of the switch light and the continued success of switch especially last year with animal crossing 
has made it so that Nintendo did not need to find a solution. And honestly, like, what solution would you want in a Switch other than either a dedicated home console, which defeats the purpose, or something that can do a little bit more under the hood, which it, it sounds like they're doing. But where do you guys fall on this one? Matt, are you ready for a 4K future? Yeah, I think the 4K part of this is the most interesting part. Uh, I think I'd be going back on my prediction if I said that they would have both, right? I think I just said it was dedicated home console, which I know defeats the purpose of the Switch, but it would marry between the light, the in-between, and stay at home on 4K. Also, I think that would make... I don't know, maybe it does. Maybe development gets harder if there's all these different SKUs out there. Uh, But I don't know. I... 4K is definitely that kind of needs to happen, especially for those that primarily play in the dock uh, that have 4K TVs at this point. So uh, yeah, I'm the same way. So uh, yeah, yeah 4K, that, but... that makes sense. <laughs> Mark, the Hyper Warriors was one that we noted was kind of struggling. Do you think that this will have a lot more power under the hood for things like first party games to run better? I. I mean, I feel like that that would be a given, right? Like, I don't know if they would really have to change much software, right? Software wise, like, kind of like me with my PC now, playing games that are like ten years old and they just run like butter, you know? Because yeah, my my because my hardware is just pew. But uh, I mean, that's just I just expect something like that on a somewhat smaller scale. Like, I I don't know how different things would be i can't imagine i mean yeah things would run better but i don't think they would but nothing visually i think would change right like it's just yeah and i I don't think they really can get away with it because they've sold a bunch of switches and they've sold a bunch of switch light and you you still need to put those games out for those consoles right so they can't I, i think something like hyrule warriors might get the benefit where it does run better on better hardware but it still needs to be, you know what I mean? Like, a developer still has to worry about those old platforms. Yeah, like, like Nintendo seems like they're they're starting to pick up the pace with catching up with, like, hardware. But I think software-wise, like, the like visuals or graphics are always going to be a little behind with the times just for the sake of performance. I think, like, that's, like, their yeah. thing. Well, a lot of their, like, so. main characters and franchises all have a certain art style to them like you're never going to see a nathan drake looking mario like it that's just it just goes against their entire aesthetic so i think that kind of in a way helps the fact that they're usually a little behind on the hardware part of it as opposed to your sony's and microsoft's and i guess computers in general but uh nah like this makes sense but like Joe said, like, you have to respect the all the other Switches, especially the Switch lights that you just sold um, in order to keep you know, keep people happy. Yeah. Um, the Switch is four years old now, so we'll close out real quick as we prepare for a 4K future. Real quick, just like, uh, initial interest. Are you guys all ready to line up at a Best Buy? Uh, for this Switch OLED, if it's later this year or beginning of next? I, uh, my gut says no, but I know I'll probably we'll end up getting it um, because of the 4K thing. But uh, I, I don't know. I kinda, I, like I said, I, I probably would end up buying a day one, but I kind of am still in, in wait and see. I want to see what else they can bring to the table besides just 4K. Yeah. Like, I assume they would have some kind of I would hope they have some kind of, like, direct-like thing about it. Kind of, like, breaking down what's what. I hope so, but at the same time, like, some of those 3DS models and stuff, they're just, like... Or, like, the the Switch Lite was a a July morning uh, commercial where they're like, check this out, dude. And you're like, okay. So, like, yeah, so this wouldn't be taking place of, like, the Switch Pro, quote, unquote. I think this is the Switch Pro. I think this that's exactly this. I think okay. this is their mid year cycle like their mid cycle upgrade that you saw yeah, Microsoft a... and Sony do this year. Or sorry, last so, cycle. <laughs> right now I think it's being referred to as like the OLED switch. I'm gonna make a recommendation that we call it the Switch thirty two X. Uh just for ease of understanding. No, it's the like Switch that. Advance. No, no, no. 
Switch Advance. Yeah, it's part Switch. of my naming, man. But then, but then that implies it's like the next one. They got to keep it in the same family. No, 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 no. What? <laughs> so, all right, so CD. hold on, wait, time out. Nintendo doesn't need to worry about their name because they already fucked up all their name of the 3DS, so it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, new <laughs> Nintendo Switch 32X. <laughs> Adding new to anything is just a mistake. So Ugh. Switch Advance, and then you proper Switch Two. Not Switch yeah. U, no bullshit. Switch two. I think, they, I think they'll drop the Switch Super branding. Switch DD. <laughs> yes, yes. Super Switch 32X DD. Turbo. Turbo. <laughs> the final Switch challengers. No. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so I think, well, with this, I'm going to assume that this is probably going to be the most optimal way to run Breath of the Wild 2. Right, and, and Splatoon, like, I think all so, of those things, like, that's where this falls That in. alone is going to be my main reason, because, or else I would have bought Breath of the Wild for Wii U. Yeah. And I didn't, so. <laughs> I Here. am very excited for, hopefully, a Mark Cerny-level-esque video where they show Breath of the Wild 1 running on both of these things, side by side. You know what I mean? Hmm. Here's what's going to happen. You're, I'm going to, this is what, I'm going to say it right now. It's going to launch with Breath of the Wild 2, like I predicted. And then I'm going to say, well, I'm going to buy it for Splatoon. And I'm going to wait till Splatoon to buy it. But then I'm just going to buy day one and play Breath of the Wild 2 on that. Yeah. It's gonna, go. We're going to go to repeat the cycle. That's fine. We can do that four years, four years later. And then ARMS um, 2 will come out and kind of not be all that great. Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> Silical. What else came out this year? Oh, Odyssey <laughs> came out that same year, too. Yeah, it did. I don't think I like that game. <laughs> I like parts of it. It's, yeah, I, I thought like it was enjoyable. It. Just, yeah, that weird, a whole <laughs> that weird level out of nowhere that was like very fire emblem looking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but no, the Switch. I think uh, ultimately, like it's it's still one of my favorite consoles, if not my favorite console. You know what I mean? I I love playing on that thing. I love the versatility of it, and I think. I think Nintendo is also at a point now where they're letting that new generation continue to develop and grow. That we're seeing a lot of exciting things on the Switch that we wouldn't have seen on Wii U, did not see on 3S, 3DS. Um, you know, I'm curious to see how they new Nintendo stuff is always exciting, but I think I've I don't think I've been personally as excited for Nintendo stuff as I am now in a long time. Like maybe since the beginning of the Wii. Hmm. Yeah, it's understandable. Full of hope. I mean, Switch basically feels like a second chance at the Wii U. Like, yeah. So it still kind of has a lot of that, like, remnants of that into it. Yeah. And if they can, what I, I guess, I don't know for sure, but from the way they're describing the system, I think it's going to end up being same kind of form factor, probably with like a taller edge to edge display. But I, I assume that you know. Joy-Con will still work and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, maybe. Yeah. I, that might be wrong, but... A better dock, hopefully. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, did he, did he do a dockless version because the, the same dock holds up? Like, they can no. sell a new approved one or whatever, but same dock might hold the up. Dock has a, the dock has a built-in Ethernet port. Do yeah. it. <laughs> that would be nice. Can this old dock output the 4K, though? Well, I don't think it's the dock that's the problem. You don't think? I, mean, I think it's the console. I don't think the console can do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, probably not. It'd be nice if I didn't have to buy another dock. I think the dock. I don't think the dock does anything, guys. I think it just charges. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. You probably have to have a 4K compatible cable, but as long as you've got yeah. that, maybe it just. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, before we close out, favorite game on the Switch over the last four years. Ooh. Mm. Uh, my gut says yeah. Splatoon, but part of me, when I mean? loved, when I loved this game, Mario Tennis, dude. Yeah. But there are moments where I absolutely hate that game, so, yeah. That just means you love it that much more. <laughs> uh, like, Breath of the Wild seems too easy of an answer. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't in love with it at first, 
Um, so it, it took took some time to get around to that one, but I think most enjoyable experience from beginning to end, I think, was Odyssey. Yeah, I like even though it's like a lot of it, you know, its style is very like playground esque with like each little level and there's just like shines out the ass everywhere. But like where it did, pun intended, I guess, shine. Um, I did, I did really enjoy the whole like new Dunk City part and like the ending and yeah, that, that's the stuff was cool. Yeah, that, no, yeah, that that has some good moments, some good like celebratory moments. My gut said Breath of the Wild, and I'll stick with it, I guess, because it it was like that sense of discovery. We talked about it last week with the Legend of Zelda 35th anniversary stuff, but that just kind of sense of wonder and like what's over there, and that just constant like discovery throughout 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 and I, I loved like sharing about sharing with everybody like what we were going through but i think also when i think about it uh not maybe not my favorite game but my favorite one to watch continue to grow is super smash brothers which i was the, about to say sorry new answer smash it's it's smash. yeah like the fact that we got so it's, many <laughs> characters from so many franchises over and the years so many stages in that world of light campaign yeah <laughs> never ending i uh, watched the still adding things I watched the Belmont reveal again. Oh, it's so good. I forgot that K. Rule was also announced in that same hour-long direct. Yeah. That was so... Oh, so good. It was a, <laughs> it was it was a, a sandwich. Day. Yeah. And, like, World of Light wasn't even announced yet. Oh, my God, dude. World of Light. Oh, God. It was so good. And then they showed that second map. Give you a second world. <laughs> and then a third one after that. Um, yeah, I still have to try out the new characters. Uh, actually, I still have to watch the Sakurai presentation. I haven't watched that yet. And then I want to dive in and check out Pyro and Mithra. Yeah. Um, that's it. That's it for episode 391. We're going to be back next week with another one of these. And we've got, uh, another hot topic planned for, for next time. Uh, between now and then, happy birthday to one Ben Barris. That'll be coming up before our next podcast episode. Hey. So if you can find him, tell him happy birthday. If not, just, you know, believe in him in your heart, I guess. Think about a bass guitar, I suppose. Uh, between now and then, you guys got any big gameplay plans? Uh, definitely Loop Hero. I'm going to stick with that. See what, if I can figure out what the hell to do in that game. Uh... I don't know. I, I've been, it's been too steamy for me. I gotta do something to shake it up. And then 2K came in. I know I might mess around the GM stuff, but I don't think that's gonna be worth talking about. Uh, I, I need something weird to shake up the podcast. I'll find something. Super Smash Bros. You want recommendations? I'll give you three. Mark and I can give you three recommendations. No, I'm gonna go find on my own. I promise it would be All weird. Right. It won't be Matt esque. I'm, I'm interested in this. Mark, anything between now and next podcast that you're you're still going to chip away at that Resident Evil Six on stream? Yeah, that that, that that's going to be a guarantee for like the next week or two. Um, I'm sure I'll, you know Loop here will be in in between probably some other games. Uh, I recently acquired uh, Search Party on Steam, so I want to I want to play through that. Nice. Get some old Clock Tower ish vibes in there. Yeah. Uh, I might do that Alien Isolation, maybe. We'll see. I, I played through a good chunk of it, so I don't know if I'm going to like start playing it and be like, oh, I remember that. Uh, all right, I already did this. You know what I mean? And get turned off or whatever, but I could get with it. I know. Um, I, you pro yeah, I hope that doesn't happen, but I know like the end of that game was like the frowned upon part. It was one of those that lasted too long. I mean, that's kind of why I ended up stopped playing it, because I was like, eh, I kind of get what they're doing here. I, you know what I mean? It wasn't adding anything new throughout the campaign, but we'll see. I don't know. What, you got to throw a basketball behind your head in one shot and make it? <laughs> um, Sean tried to do at the end of that Phoenix Suns game. <laughs> we would have won. I will be playing more uh, NBA 2K for sure this week. Uh, I can't not play that. Um yeah, I don't know. I might be playing that Aliens vs. Predator on the Mister and just screwing around with that stuff. Do it. Uh, as I back another Patreon for <laughs> Mister stuff. But that's all. Been going, it's been going super fun. So, um, Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, we'll be back next week with another one. Podcast at thefreecheese.com is an email address you can send questions or 
thoughts, feedback, anything. Uh, Twitter, you can follow the podcast at some free cheese. You can follow Mark at Aug underscore mental. You can follow Matt at Matty Ice one three one. That's it for us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, listener, for listening. Bye.